Hi everyone, Vicki Verla here. I'm going to do a little bonus reading for the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is coming up on uh, 420, April 20th. Um, this happens every so often, but it hasn't happened in this sign since the early 1940s or something. So it's a pretty new experience for most of the viewers. And even if you were alive during the 19, early 1940s, chances are you were just a child or a baby and you probably don't remember it anyway. So, uh, yeah, so this is going to be impactful for everybody. Uranus brings about change. Uh, Uranus and Taurus is wanting to get us out of being stuck in the mud and propel us forward into the new age, the space age, the next paradigm, the next evolution of mankind. And it's been, you know, kind of a push me pull you for several years with the Uranus and Taurus. Well, here comes Jupiter finally. Jupiter comes along and Jupiter's going to expand everything it touches. So it's going to bring big stuff. It's going to expand that Uranian energy. It could also expand the Taurian energy too to some extent, but at this moment and this is impactful. I mean, it's already an orb at the time we're doing this reading. I mean, it's been an, it's going to be an orb for a good month or something. So, you know, there is this element of, yes, this is impactful. This is the moment where we break out, break free of whatever's been really heavy, holding us down in our lives. And um, it's very powerful. And Jupiter also is the planet of luck. And Uranus is the, the planet of unexpected changes. So let's go through, I'm going to go through sign by sign. We're going to start with the sign of Aries. And we're going to look at it. Now this is going to be happening in your second house if your Aries rising, okay? So second house is money, possessions. There could be some major breakthrough in that area. Maybe you could get a raise. Maybe in some cases things could be big change-ups, you know. It could be set free whether you want to be set free or not. That's another thing with the Iranian energy. So some of you, maybe the job that you had is ending. But know that this is going to be some kind of big blessing and that something even bigger and better is coming forward afterwards. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pull two cards for each sign. Let's get I don't know, two cards for Aries. We've got the three of rods. Your ships are coming in. And the uh, magician you know so that's you all day long Aries you're the first sign of the zodiac you're that independent go-getter you know going after what you want and this is you getting what you want I mean we're coming out of all your eclipse season the eclipse is like a week before or so two weeks not even so Aries you're going through a lot of tumultuous things besides just the Jupiter Uranus you, know, you guys are you're so in the mix but it's a course correction. Your ships are coming in and you're ready to forge ahead. You're ready to go forward in whatever. You, you're in a your newer way, in your Aryan way that you are. That drive ambition, be that trailblazer. This is going to be really powerful, perhaps affecting, you know, maybe your money houses, highly likely. All right, Taurus, well, this is happening in your sign. So definitely you're going to feel it. You're going to find, you know, you may find your whole outlook on life is changing or how, you know, how people see you and you're perceived also. But you may really just wanting to be breaking out of who you've been up to this point in your life. I mean, it's, it's that big. This could be a major turning point, a major change, a major threshold that you're going to go walk through. Let's go ahead and get two cards for Taurus. We got you've been going through some struggle with the Seven of Rods, followed by the Page of Cups. Some solution is going to be offered to you, probably maybe from spirit or even from the mouth of, mouths of babes, you know, mouth of a child may have a solution. But it's going to be communicated, it's going to be presented to you, and it's going to be something that you can really, that will help alleviate everything that's the stress and struggle that perhaps you've been going through. Um, don't fight against the Iranian energy. I know you're Taurus. I know you like your feet in the ground. I know you want to be strong and stand stand with your feet in the ground. This is a time to embrace change and embrace what the universe is trying to show to you because highly likely you're going to be going through a lot of changes at this time. Okay, for a Gemini's, if you're Gemini rising, this is going to be in your 12th house. So it could very much be triggering things from the past. Not only the past in this life, but past life things. People and situations that are going to be showing up in your life at this time, they're going to have a strong past life implications. Okay, let's go ahead and get two cards for our Gemini's. We've got the Hermit, so that's very much 12th house energy too, going within, which is not, you know, Gemini's, you guys, and you're also having some struggles as well. Well, I mean, this is, 
this card popping out twice, not surprising after we've been through eclipse season. So a lot of upheavals and struggles. Getting our footing on the new situation, you know. Hermit, I know Gemini's your very mental thinking, outside the box, always thinking. This is a time to go within, meditate, reflect. Pause before you wait to be shown. There, something's going to be shown to you. So don't go forging right in. Don't dive into the struggle for sure. Step away from the struggle. Back away from the struggle. Get some perspective. You're going to get these insights. You're going to get these downloads with the 12th house activation. Seek wise advice from others too. A wise counselor perhaps. All right, Cancer. This is happening in your 11th house. Let's hope wishes and dreams, money from the career, friends and associates. So that's the area of life that could be affected if you're Cancer rising. You know, you could be really, I feel like many of you are going to sort of find your tribe right now. You could really find, if you've been kind of flailing in that area, if you've been like, a, they're showing me a boat between ports, you know, you've left that, you know that this old paradigm stuff isn't really for you anymore, and you've just been kind of floating and waiting to see what, what's next. Well, that could be shown to you. This could be illuminated. They could, you'd be welcomed with open arms is what they're saying. Welcome you with open arms into this new group. Maybe it's even a church or, you know, it could be all kinds of groups or friend group. Three of Rods. Somebody else had that. And the world. Wow. So that is some major success we're looking at here. Look at the top. Of, I, and I, when I was creating this deck, I was really, I thought I never doubled a word, a keyword, but I did. I doubled Arrival. And it just showed me here. There's only like two or three words that I doubled throughout the whole 78 cards, okay? And arrival is one of them. Arrival, arrival. So I guess you're going to be arriving, Cancer, right? I guess we could, it's, it's safe to assume that Cancers are going to be arriving. And it's interesting the vision they gave me of you on the ship. So maybe you're even going to be traveling. The world can indicate travel. And the Three of Rods is also your ship coming in. But that arrival stuff, beside for a minute, major success when you've got this lineup you're seeing your ships come in so you're expecting a certain amount you say well i put this out to the universe i'm expecting this certain amount of return on my investment whether it's time energy money whatever it is but the world says wow not only are you going to get what you're hoping for but beyond your expectations with the world so wow really nice energy for cancers okay next let's move on to the sign of leo well, if you're Leo rising, this is happening up in your 10th house. 10th house is primarily thought of as career, and that's always been my go-to thing, 10th house career, yeah. But um, lately I've been thinking of it more as like more of your life's mission or the highest you can possibly achieve in this life or what you're really shooting for in this life, not necessarily just about your career. Because maybe your highest aspiration isn't your career. Maybe your career is just how you make money. And your higher aspirations is in a different sector of uh, your life and your chart. But let's get two cards here. We've got the Magician and the Nine of Swords. Okay, well, Leo, many of you have been through some stuff here when you get the Nine of Swords, but it's eclipse. It's probably over the eclipse season and all these kinds of things. Like I said with um, second house action, 10th house, sometimes these eclipses will eclipse something out of your life, or so even the Iranian energy can pull something out of your life that wasn't working. Maybe you, were on your conscious 3D level, weren't ready to let it go. Maybe it's like, oh, this isn't fair. Why is this pulled out of my life? The magician is saying, it's because it's clearing the way. It's clearing the way for you to forge ahead, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and go forward with your highest aspirations. It's a course correction. You know, these eclipses and the Jupiter Uranus, these are all course corrections. So possibly you were on the wrong path in some sense, and now you, the way is being cleared, and the way is being shown. And even just look at the, the uh, not the emperor, but the magician's stance. You know, he's pointing straight up at his true north. And like that 10th house could be that true north. So all, you know, all systems go. It's clear sailing. This is in the past. It's time to be right in the present moment and go forward with your future. Okay, Virgo, this is going to be happening in your ninth house of spiritual growth, education, foreign travel, foreign people. Um, let's see what we get here. Education, teaching, expanding of knowledge. Let's see what we get here for two cards for our Virgo friends for the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Five of Pentacles, feeling a little bit down in the posture syndrome. Three of Rods. That Three of Rods has been really popping out here. So... Big, you know, things are going to start moving. We're just on the precipice. It's actually 
almost a week later when Mercury goes direct. But I feel like for many people, the eclipse season's been so disruptive. There's been a lot of things that have been stalled. Now all of a sudden we're gearing up. This is kicking up things to gear up and get ready to move forward. Uh, you know, you've been in this Five of Pentacles, and this is like feeling not well enough. I mean, we had that that whole eclipse with, with the Chiron. This card reminds me a lot of the Chiron, like feeling not worthy, feeling less than, imposter syndrome, all that sort of stuff. Maybe you worked really, I mean, Virgos, you're always working hard on something, too. Maybe you were really working hard on something. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this just seems like I'm never, I'm beating a dead horse. Nothing's ever going to happen. And then, bam, all of a sudden, it's Jupiter Uranus. You know, your ships are coming in. You see the on the horizon. You see the success. You see the reward after all your hard work. So again, very positive energy for Virgos as well. All right, Libos. Well, you know, you've come off the heels of the eclipse in your sign, and you've been really through the ringer quite a bit too. There's been a lot of upheaval and change, uh, you know, in your lives as well. This is happening in your eighth house of death, taxes, sexuality money from a partnership. Um, I tend to think of 8th house more of as a, um, you know, a financial house, you know, because it's, it's 7 from the 2nd, you know, the 2nd house of money. But it, it rules over all these things. You could be freed from some kind of big financial burden, or maybe if you've been struggling financially, some, because this could be, this is investors and money from other, other people's money. Maybe somebody could come in and offer you some assistance, some kind of a grant or a program, or maybe they want to be a backer or a supporter of yours or in some way. So it'd be a good time to like do things like fundraising and things like that. First card out, Queen of Cups, Water Sign Energy. Second card out is the Ace of Rods, planting those seeds that are going to bloom and grow into new beginnings. Well, we're looking at Water Sign Energy. So, Water Signs are the Scorpios, the Cancers, and the Pisces. So, this could be somebody that you are involved with as far as this goes. Some kind of, you're going to plant the seeds with this person that's going to blossom and grow into more. And Flourish, I'm hearing. Flourish. Water it. If you water the seeds that you've planted, and why water? Give it attention. You know, uh, nurture it. Give it attention. You're going to see exponential growth. That's what the guides are coming through. So could be financial, but there's also maybe a big emotional component when you get the Queen of Cups in here. Okay. Next, let's move on to the sign of Scorpio. Well, Scorpio, this is happening in your seventh house of partnerships. So if you're single and looking, you could absolutely meet somebody. Some of you with the Iranian energy, you may be letting go of a relationship. I mean, that's a distinct possibility if you're Scorpio rising. Even if it ended a while ago, maybe you're finally just really letting go of it energetically or emotionally yourself. Um, but it's only to welcome in the Jupiter energy, something bigger and better coming your way. Um, through other people, though, strongly attached to other people, whether or not it's your romantic partner or not, there's a strong emphasis on the partnership of this uh, aspect here. Okay, we've got the King of Cups. That would be your energy, most likely. Could be another water sign. Ooh, and the Queen of Cups. Look at that. Well, talking about the Seventh House, talking about romantic relationships, well, the Cups energy... Astrology aside, the Cups energy are, is the Loving Cups. The Cups are the same as the... Um, the hearts in the in the regular playing cards, okay? So who is the King of Cups or the King of Hearts partner? Well, it's the Queen of Cups. So this is finding that natural partnership. And there is a big emotional connection. Whether you are the Queen or the King or whoever you relate to. I like that the King came out first because I always want to say about the King of Cups is that there is this emotional maturity. There is this person is ready for a relationship on an emotional level. Um, they're not playing baby games, they're not doing, you know, silly stuff, you know, they're sincere, they've got that cup, they wear their heart on their sleeve, and they're facing each other. So this is confirming that for many Scorpios, if you're looking, it could be a big time of love. Some of you, you may release an old relationship in order to find this Jupiter, or this better, kind of this higher love. Bring me a higher love, Ooh. Yeah, you could be bringing in that higher love. Um, but it could be a partnership of any type. But just somebody that's on the same page as you. You're, you're in that same energy. You just gel. You just vibe together. So really really nice energy for Scorpios too. Me, I'm Scorpio rising. That's exactly opposing my natal Venus, actually, at 21 degrees of Scorpio. So, And, I mean, I'm not looking, but you never know. Something's pop. I'll take the... I'll take... <laughs> the business partnerships over the love affairs. <laughs> 
All right, next we're going to move on to the sign of Sagittarius. Well, this is happening in um, your sixth house of work, health, um, pets, things like this. You can unexpectedly have a pet show up. I've had that happen a few times where an animal just shows up. Oh, here's your first card. It just pops right out. Queen of Swords, uh, you know. One time I had a cat follow me home from the store, and then I, well, back to my work. I walked to the store from my work, followed me from all, like a couple blocks, and then it, I go, listen, I'm going home. You're going to have to, be, you know, I can't, you can't come with me, and it just hopped in my car. <laughs> so I said, well, okay, I guess you're coming with me, you know, and that was a cat I had for years, Sheba. She was a cool cat. Cool cat. All right, so looking at some financial things, perhaps, this is the house of work for you guys, so there could be some, they could be feeling a little bit under the gun uh, with this work situation, but I want to say because of this air sign energy so strong, I feel like by the time we hit to Gemini, which is going to be about a month from this time, that this is going to alleviate, and the work you're doing now is going to have this big payoff later. It may, Jupiter can increase and make more, it does, okay, so you may unexpectedly, like especially if you're doing, you know, if you have more than one iron in the fire, like if you've got, you know, an online business and then your regular job, maybe all of a sudden you get really busy at your regular job, or all of a sudden your online business, you start, you know, you, something goes viral and you have all these orders to fulfill and you're overwhelmed a little bit here. So there could be a sense of being overwhelmed, but um, this could be, if that's the case, you may even have to enlist some help. You know, maybe you have somebody that can help, maybe, you know, a partner, air sign house, Gemini-ish. So work is going to be very emphasized. There's going to be a lot of work, but you're going to be making a lot of progress in that arena. All right, next we're going to move on to the sign of Capricorn. Well, this is happening in your fifth house of love affairs, children, gambling, uh, fun and play, so it's a good place for you. And Capricorns, you know, you have that uh, you know, have that reputation of being a little bit stoic and serious. So this is a time to really kind of allow for the play, for the lightness of energy. Go out and do something fun, or just you know, I made this affirmation recently. It's like I really want to start enjoying my life. You know, I really want to start having some fun in my life because. It seems like I, you know, it's been a lot of burdensome. Well, it's, I'm Capricorn's son too, and for Capricorns, we've had this Pluto in our sign. You know, it's just like we, we carry that heavy load anyway. Capricorns carry that heavy load. You know, that's their that's their thing. So this is a time to say, you know, maybe make that affirmation for yourself. I like to start enjoying my life a little more. I want to have some fun in my life. Whatever happened to laughter? Does anybody remember laughter? <laughs> Most of you will get that reference, I think. Zeppelin. Is it Song or is that Stairway to Heaven? Soft Song remains the same album. It might be off of Stairway to Heaven. But does anybody remember laughter? Well, talk about what I was just saying. This heaviness. And this is actually your card, um, Capricorn. The devil in the t traditional you know, major arcana. This represents you. And, but it is being in bondage, carrying that heavy load. Death is just the death of that, you know death of that let's move on to something new let's we can drop some of this heaviness when i see this death card too i want to say later in the month i think it's the 23rd yeah so it's a few days later we're going to have a scorpio uh full moon so this in death this card is your card in the major account this is capricorn's card and this is scorpio's card so we might be talking about this scorpio yeah it's the 23rd we might be talking about this scorpio full moon that's going to allow you, you may, or maybe you'll have some illumination about where you can make some changes in your life. And if you're Capricorn rising, let's see that Scorpio new full moon is going to be in your 11th house of friends and associates. So, you know, have a little fun. You don't always have to be chained to your workload all the time, Capricorn. Cut loose a little. Have a little fun. Clear, cleanse out your aura, you know, not with of all the stress. Get that aura lightened, you know. Clear the aura, okay? <laughs> clear that aura, Capricorn. All right, Aquarius. All right, Aquarius, well, this is happening down in your fourth house of home, family, foundations. Of course, the standard, you know, thing could be maybe if some of you are going to be moving. If you've been wanting to move or make changes around your home environment, this could definitely be happening or, or a great time to do so. 
The other thing that the fourth house rules, though, is our upbringing. It's our early imprinting. And many of us, you know, everybody's parents did the best they can, but, you know, we all make mistakes and everybody, it's part of their job, you know, karmically. <laughs> you, you incarnate into these families with, with this dysfunction that needs to be worked out or healed or whatever. And that could be a, some of the focus of this. You know, it could really come to the forefront with the Jupiter, but with the Iranian energy, it could be freed from it. You could be freed from it. You could take that higher path. You could see it from a higher perspective, like, oh, yeah, my parents were doing the best they could. Maybe they weren't equipped to handle. It was, it's hard, you know. Incarnations can be heavy and hard. It's, you know, when we're on the other side looking in, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll, do, I'll take that. Put some of that on my plate. Sure, this, that, trauma. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> I can handle that. <laughs> you get down here, it's like, what the, what? But the other thing is with you, you've got the Pluto going in through your house, so you are going through major transformation. The third thing with you is Uranus is your ruling planet. So you're all about that anyway. You're all about being released and freed from these heavy burdensome things. Okay, let's go ahead and get two cards. Four Aquarius, we've got the Four of Swords and the Three of Pentacles. So maybe you've been resting, but now you're going to start... Re Some of you may be actually remodeling or rebuilding a home or doing something like that. You know, there could be that kind of thing going on. But in a way, it's more like you're rebuilding your life from the ground up, and that's that fourth house foundation, too. Some of you may be going back to school. Maybe it's been a while. Some of you, you maybe it's been a while since you've done a certain kind of job or work or even used a certain software. What I dive into recently, and I haven't used it in ages... Oh, Illustrator. And I used to know Illustrator like the back of my hand and I've been using more Procreate but I had to go into Illustrator and I was like oh, how do I do that again you know I used to be able to without thinking but I had to kind of you know look a few things up and remember how to do it you know it could be like that because it's been a while you know maybe it's been a while since you done this particular skill set you know and you might have to dust it off and brush up on it but you're definitely building something and that's also the message of the fourth house too all right Pisces well this is a uh, clap not eclipse trying to say eclipse and I'm trying to say <laughs> Jupiter Uranus conjunction it's happening in your third house of communication so communication short distance travel siblings neighborhood these types of things messaging communication is big though so I mean the Mercury's been retrograde in all month but that's getting ready to go direct to within a week on the 25th less than a week away from this point so five days later it'll go direct but, you know, this could be very much um, insightful. One of the things I'm picking up for you guys, Pisces, is that this could be your words matter and your thoughts matter. Because those are all the realm of the third house. So if you're thinking, whatever you're thinking, catch yourself. What are you saying? You know, people like to use sarcasm. And I was always, you know, th thought sarcasm was funny. But sarcasm is really, you know, you're, you're kind of manifesting what you don't want. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Doesn't that always happen to me? Well, naturally, my one friend used to always say, well, naturally. Well, naturally, I got stuck in the, cab, cra you know, the traffic jam, or naturally, the whole thing fell apart. She used to always say that, and I was remember telling her, I go, don't say naturally uh, before bad things, you know, <laughs> and, and say, you know, naturally, I, I breezed right through traffic, because that's what's natural, you know. But, so watch that tendency. We all do it, and it's, it's in the vernacular. It's in the collective vernacular. We all do that stuff. So just be aware of that and be aware of, you know what I've been doing lately, I'm just going to do a whole video on it, I'm calling it the magic eraser. If I'm replaying some scenario in my head over and over again, something negative or something that got in my craw, you know, I take my magic eraser <laughs> and I go like this and I just erase it out of my mind's eye. And then every time I catch myself doing that, I mean, you can also just change your focus to something positive. That's another, you know, find something to admire or say that's beautiful or good. But that magic eraser thing, that's been working really good for me to just, like, make it stop, you know. Stop thinking about that. Stop visualizing that scenario. Stop going to those same old patterns, those grooves in the record that are bringing up this negative stuff that you don't want to be working with. You want to be freed of that stuff. You want to take a new approach, a higher dimensional, you know, new paradigm stuff, right? Here's that Three of Rods again. That's been out quite a bit, this uh, this reading. And then the Moon card, yeah. So, yeah, your ships are coming in. There's big success on the horizon. Now, the Moon could totally be these eclipses, but there's also going to be, three days later, a full Moon in Scorpio. 
which is very much kind of harmonious with your energy. And that would be your ninth house, too, the full moon in Scorpio. So that's a place where you really can get these uh, spiritual insights, these spiritual downloads about... And third house, well, sixth house to some degree, but I think of third house, too, as like your everyday routines, too. Things you just do, a automatic pilot, you know. That's sixth house, but third house, too, it's your mental, your automatic thought process, you know, those uh, neural pathways, you know. Those, you know, get up in the morning and you start thinking about that thing that pissed you off or whatever that, and then you're you're spiraling right down that pathway. So let's take it to this higher level. Let's look at the the, the new things that are coming in on the horizon, and let's you know start really getting serious about working with our energy and working with our automatic thought processes and directing them in a new direction. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this little mini update. I do. This is very similar to what I do every week on the Patreon page, but I use the astrology calendar. We go through all the aspects for the week, and then I go through and, and I pull two cards for each sign, just like I just did. So if you like this kind of reading, you may want to check out Patreon. You get the whole month's readings for five fifty-five a month, and you get a reading every week for all 12 signs. Similar to this, but you know, not exactly like this. But if you like it, check it out. All right, I hope that you all are going to utilize this powerful energy. It's pretty much, you know, it's pretty much like a once in a lifetime uh, energy. I don't know. I think it's going to happen again. But it's going to be a long time. It, it might be like 80 years from now. So those of us who are, you know, over 50, I don't know, we'd be, we probably aren't going to be alive in 80 years. Who knows? But, you know, some people would be, especially with the advancing, you know, um, how we are, our lifespan is advancing and everything, you know, our life expectancy, I mean, is advancing. So, you know, some people born today, I'm sure many people born in, in you know, uh, now in the, like the 2020s or the 2010s or the 2000s even, I, I feel like you guys totally could live to be over 100. So, yeah, maybe you'll you'll see it again, but, I mean, you will be, you know, 100 years old or something. So, I mean, I don't know how how much you'll enjoy it, but never, see, you know, you never know. I remember I was, uh, when I was young doing readings at the fair, I remember people, I'd open up the ephemeris and see, like, oh, they're having their second Saturn return. And I would think that I was so, <laughs> such a little shit, you know, looking back, I was like, you little shit. I was, I was like, why are they even bothering to get a reading? Their life is over. <laughs> and now here I am, you know, I've passed my second Saturn return, and, and I'd like to think my life's not over. You know, I still have plans, desires, ambitions, you know. You know, you're, you're still the same inside, no matter what age, you know, you're, you're, you're at. So, who knows, maybe at 100 you guys are still going to be rocking, you know. And then you look back and say, yeah, I remember 2024. That Jupiter Uranus. <laughs> All right, everybody. Anyways, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great uh, transit. This is a big time. Let's get focused on our energy. Let's focus on what we want to create rather than let the universe have its way with us. Let's harness the energy and use it for our highest good, okay? Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Remember your love and beauty incarnate. If you want to get a reading from me, oh, I forgot to break out my thing. Uh, you're looking at vickyurelly.com. Don't be fooled by imposters. I would love it if you hit that like and subscribe. Go to my website for more information about readings and the different things that I offer. Okay, have a great one. Later.